Hey guys, I'm a SafeToy frontend developer and I learned it in six months and I show you how you can too. So why should you become a frontend developer? Good salary and good work-life balance. Why specifically you want to become a frontend developer? You know the answer because you clicked on this video and you should also write it down. So think deeply about why you even want to become a frontend developer because it's important to have the right mindset when you want to accomplish such a big test like becoming a frontend developer. It will be a long grind, so it's better when you know what motivation you have and why you do it. So before we start with the developer guide, you will have to do some preparation. You will need to know how does the internet work and simple Unix terminal commands like ls, cd, ping. Commands like these will make your life easier later down the road. And so let's get started for real now. First thing you need to learn is obviously HTML and CSS. So you need to learn HTML to structure a website and you need CSS to style a website. So HTML shouldn't take you very long. The basics are very easy and fast to learn what can take you long is CSS. And for me specifically, I hate CSS and I was never really good at it. For me, I just really needed to grind it out. So beware that it will be a grind. So you can learn HTML and CSS pretty much anywhere. But if you want to get results fast, you should jump to Code Academy because you can write it and then you can see the results and it's really fun that way. I really like Code Academy, so if you want to do it as well, it's good enough for basics. Obviously, if you want to go deeper, you can take a course. Uh, my favorite courses are on frontendmasters.com, but the course doesn't really matter as much. You can also take a YouTube course if you wanted to. What matters is that you make a project afterwards. So after you pick the course, maybe you pick your favorite website, like for example, YouTube, you try to style it and you try to structure it. If it's too much for you, because YouTube is obviously a huge site, then pick a part like a sidebar or pick the nav bar and do that first. And later on, you can put the parts together and then have a fully styled and structured website. So what I did and what really motivated me is I built my own portfolio. It looked like shit, to be honest, but it got me there. I learned some basic CSS and I also had to show something later when I applied. So if you want to do that, then you should as well, because later on it will help you massively. If you are struggling with Flexbox, then you can go on Flexbox Froggy. It's a fun game where you can align some frogs. If you want to be a Flexbox God, then go out to Flexbox Froggy. So now. Every section has a requirement before you move on. The requirements for HTML and CSS are you should have replicated a production website and you should have a simple portfolio. If you have these two things, we can jump to the next section. So now we are going to the next section and you might think it's JavaScript. It's not JavaScript. It will be Git and GitHub. It will be beneficial later down the line because you will commit. And every time you commit to your GitHub repository, good recruiters will see that you're working on your GitHub very actively. Then you have a great GitHub timeline and you also know the basics of Git and GitHub, which will serve you in every job. Also, you will be having everything on the cloud. So if your drive for whatever reason breaks, then your code is safe and you will have it on the cloud. And if you switch stations, like if you go from Windows to Mac or vice versa, then you can just clone it and you can keep working on it. So that's why Git and GitHub are great. What helped me is using GitHub Desktop. It makes everything more clear and you don't need to learn the commands. To be honest, I don't even know all of the commands. I still mostly work with the UI. So if you want to have the requirements to move on to the next section, they are having a repository in your GitHub. So now let's get to the fun stuff. We are going to JavaScript. It was long awaited for me. JavaScript is very fun. And if you see like manipulation of the website, like for example, you click on the side drawer and the side drawer slides open, that's JavaScript in action. So it's the same procedure like before. Pick your favorite course, then do a project. If it's your first programming language, then it's completely normal to feel lost. Programming is a very hard skill to obtain and it will take you longer to get accustomed to these new pathways in your brain. So really take your time and don't judge yourself. So for the vanilla JavaScript project, I would advise to you to do a simple to-do list. You can also pick your favorite web app again, like YouTube, if you want to, and you can try to clone some functionalities like the side drawer or like a model that which opens. Besides that, you should be able to perform some basic algorithms. So I would recommend Code Wars for learning JavaScript algorithms because it's really fun and you will also have a rank. So you will be motivated to get more JavaScript algorithms done. The requirements from this section are you should have made a simple to-do list with vanilla JavaScript and you should be the 6Q rank in Code Wars. You can also buy a very popular course. It's called Understanding the Hot Parts of JavaScript. It's really, really popular and it's also beneficial for you if you do it. 
it's not really needed, but it will save you a lot of pain in the ass later down the line. So now we got JavaScript out of the way, what's next? Next is the front-end framework. So real enterprise projects in big companies are mostly too complicated to use with vanilla JavaScript. So for abstraction of the DOM, we use a front-end framework. Don't get too hung up on fridge front-end framework to choose. There's a whole war going on between React, Angular, Vue, and now even Svelte. I would be very pragmatic and just look at what your area needs. For example, here in Germany, a lot of people use Angular. Then React is kind of the new kid here and no one really uses Vue or Svelte. What matters most is for you to get hired and that's why pick a front-end framework from your area and stay with it. If you're still unsure which way to go, just pick React. It will be a very good choice. So if you're done with learning React, you should also be able to learn a state management framework. For Vue, it's Vuex, for example, and for React, it's mostly Redux, because state management tools will be in most projects you will encounter in real life, and recruiters will look out for it. So if you want to make your life a little bit easier, then I would advise you to choose Redux Toolkit. It's a really cool new way to learn Redux and it will abstract something away which I didn't have the luxury. So Redux Toolkit really does it easier for everyone. So I would advise you to go with Redux Toolkit. It's really awesome. It's really easy to learn. So a cool thing about React is that you can also use it for React Native after you learned it. So that way you will also be able to program Android and iOS apps. And because of that, you can also apply to even more jobs because if you know React, you're mostly now React native and most people will hire you based on that. So that's a cool plus for React. That's how even I got hired because I was starting as a React native developer. So the requirement to move on from the front end frameworks are you should rewrite your to-do list with a front framework and a state management tool. So now we are finally done, we can find the job. That was a lot, right? Now you're ready to go job hunting. What you should have now is a GitHub account with activity, a well-structured portfolio and six Q on Cold Wars. I would prioritize startups because they are more open for people who don't have the university degree. Also, you will be learning a lot more because you will need to take a lot of responsibility on a startup. So that's a great first job. If you have the opportunity, you should take an internship. It will polish your resume a bit and you can also take your skills and put them to work. So while you are applying, I hope you still have some time left because if you really want to stick out, then you should also learn TypeScript. Most companies also use TypeScript today. It's a typing system for JavaScript. It allows JavaScript to really scale well. So you will hate it at the start, but you will love it at the end. Learn TypeScript on the site. It will be a big bonus and you will be sticking out. So depending on how much time it takes you to find a job, keep working on your portfolio, make it prettier, keep working on side projects, make your GitHub activity really nice. I'm 100% sure that way you can get a front-end job. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful to you. If you need to come back to check where you are on your path, then you can do so because I will time step everything. If you want to watch my story of how I became a front-end developer, you can click here. Other than that, I would appreciate if you like and subscribe and we will see us in my next video.